Um, I can do a roll call. This is uh, six six thirty two as the starting time. And Carolyn, you're you're here. Mm -hmm. here. Yes. Molly's here. Diane's here. I, I, Holly, do you know if I'm correct? I think Kelly can't make the meetings now on Mondays. Is that right? Yeah, I think she's got conflicts on Monday. I know she said, at least for this time, it was work. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. All righty. And Stan, you're here somewhere. Yeah, you're there. Yep. Uh, Chris is working on the town report, whether well, he'll dial in or not. I'm not sure. Well, there he is right there. All right. Oh, Chris, and you and Stan were both unmuted. Is Alex uh, here? No, he's not. All right. Sorry okay, about so this. Good. Um, Alex, Alex can't make the meeting today. So, uh, Chris, do you want to convene your meeting at all for? Yeah, yeah, I think I think just for technical reasons, if we have to vote on anything, I think that um, as treasurer, I'll call the meeting to order for the Friends of Deerfield and um, um, Stan. We need two persons to agree to that. Okay, okay. I agree. I vote yes. And I vote yes. Six thirty-four. All right, so um, the, before we begin with the actual agenda, I'm just going to call for any motions to adopt or modify the agenda. Are there any other items? I know Diane has some information about the bells, so I'll add that to the uh, list. We'll do that under new business. Yeah. And um, I was just going to report uh, that I've been working with Pam in terms of the town report. So, um I'll I'll add that to the agenda. We'll get to it at some point in time. Uh, Pat, what's that? Pat, you're working with Pat on the town. Um, Pat, yeah, yeah, with for the town report. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um. All right. What we need to do first the the last meeting that we had, we did not have a quorum, so. I kept the meeting going just for informational purposes. So I sent you out a copy of what we had done during that meeting, but I did not post those minutes because we didn't have a formal uh, meeting. So one of the things that we needed to do at that meeting, however, was to approve the minutes from January's meeting. So I'd like to do that now and just get that done and out of the way, and then we can move on to the other agenda items on here. I make a motion that we accept the January 29th meeting minutes as presented. Okay. I will second that, Carolyn. All those in favor? Aye, Holly. Any, any, any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Aye, Holly. Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Diane. Good. Peter. So, that's done. Um, time capsule and the uh, commemorative bench location. That's still on our agenda. I'm not sure we've moved forward. We're getting to the point where everything, basically we've dealt with the, the bench and the idea is it's really the physical spot out there. Um, Stan and I and Chris, Chris, are you there during the? No, I let you guys do it. There was a number of you that. Yeah, went, I was went, there. Not me. We kind of went out in front, and Diane was there. We kind of went out in front Casual. of the building, and it looked as though that grassy plot to the east of the police station, towards the senior center, uh, in front of fronting the street, was a reasonable location for both the time capsule and for the bench and, and any additions that someone would want to do to the bench later on in terms of landscaping or, or what have you. I would propose that we just proceed with that as the general location and 
once we get work crews and, and the people out on uh, dig safe to make sure we don't have any cables and all of that other things or talk to uh, the town officials in terms of that location, if everything seems clean, I think it doesn't really matter whether we vote on it formally, if we just vote on a general location and let the the minute the the macro or the micro decisions be made on in terms of the party that it actually installs it. I think that sounds fine. Yeah. Okay, so we'll 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 approve providing there's no we don't find out any um, impediments against it to use that general location for both the time capsule and the and the bench. Somebody want to second that? I'll second it. Oh, good thing. <laughs> I feel better. Okay, is any any further discussions? No. Pending dig safe changes. Right. That seems to be fine. All those in favor? Hi, Holly. Hi, Diane. Hi, Carol. Carol. And me. Okay. So we're and the only on uh, the only thing I would add to that, Peter, is um, let's uh, that general location. Let's stake it out. That's what the dig safe people want. Is they want to know where you want to be. And yeah. so I don't know if between your committee or Stan or somebody can go out there and put posts in the ground. That's what they want to see. Okay. Well, I, I don't mind getting together with Stan. I've actually got some stakes in the garage. We could go, go put four corner stakes out there and just. So four by four, five by five. Uh, how long is this bench? It's at least four. What's yeah, but, the but, dimensions of the bench? The but then you need the time capsule area, yeah. which is bigger yeah. than right. anything. Right. Else. I mean, we'll we'll yeah. we'll figure that out. All but right. Okay. We, we could do a more agreeable, you know, a ten by ten or a fifteen by fifteen foot something. area, and just say both of them are going within within this area. Stan, are you good with that? Where I'm good with that. Area? Yes. Yes. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, when you, uh, Peter, when you do go to do this, could you um, let Kevin Scarborough know? Because sure. um, we, when we were doing the campus, there was all kinds of buried stuff that Dig Safe didn't even know about, the older stuff. Oh, and Kevin knew about it. So this was like pre, you know, it. it's not stuff that's being used, but... I don't know. Kevin knew knew a lot about because well, we were trying to put a tree box out here somewhere near. Yeah. The, so the, I can talk to him. Maybe the thing to do, Stan, is we get together with Kevin and instead of doing something, you know, ten by ten or fifteen by fifteen, we lay out a thirty by thirty foot block, and mm -hmm. if Dig Safe clears that size block, then we know we're pretty good with anything. I mean, I hate to keep shifting this thing because we pick a spot that's too small and then we find out that the the very corner of it crosses a water line or something like that. So let's, if we go for broke with a bigger space and that's been cleared, then I, I think we'd be more comfortable. We don't, we won't have a problem when we put the back on the ground. That, that's fine with me. We'll get together, Peter, on that. Okay. And and there's something else to remember too. These situations, um, you can dig manually. We do that in the historic cemeteries all the time. Yeah. Because if you don't know, you don't know, and you just do it one shovel at a time, and then you figure out if you hit something without wow. disturbing it. And so, so we have that reserved for us in terms of how we do this. Yeah. Well, as an archaeologist, I have a, a slightly easier trick. Uh, I actually have a soil core that I can core, just punch it in the ground, and it'll tell me whether anything's disturbed underneath that. But the other, the other approach that you could even try in a cemetery, Chris, is get a, a small bucket with no teeth on it, clear the, the duff 
or the plow zone or whatever that organic layer is above, if you've got an intrusion, you'll see it stick up plain as day because anytime you dig a hole, the dirt doesn't go back in the same way. And so the dirt is a mixture and it also tends to be softer. And so if you take that dark topsoil off, you can see that hole. Um, that's what I used to do with homicide cases with buried bodies. <laughs> okay. oh God. So, so we're covered. We're covered. We have enough expertise. We can solve this problem no matter what. Yeah. Okay. Um, Peter, I was going to suggest if Kevin meets with you, maybe you ask him about a metal plate. So if the hole is dug ahead of time, it, you know, if he would be able to provide some kind of like they do on construction on the road to yep. protect it so nobody would accidentally trip into it. Well, that's a good idea, Paul. Great when, idea. You, when you excavate the hole. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, yeah. it would probably be done, you know, a day or so before just to be ready. Yeah, yeah I think okay. Kevin does have those plates because he does have stuff for when we have. Yeah, have yeah. When there's a, a you know, uh, something in progress in the in the okay. road. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a good idea. Good Harry. idea. Thank you. All right. Next item on the agenda is the request from the Recreation Department. I had a little more uh, back and forth with Sue on that, uh, but the original budget proposal was for $7,200. And I sent you a copy, each of you a copy of that earlier on. Um, this is for a full event. It included tables, chairs, bouncy houses, face painting, bands. And so what I asked her, I, I told her that I didn't think we might be able to come up with that much money. Was there some alternative? Um, in which case she wrote back and she said, well, I could, uh, you know, reduce the number of bouncy houses, but, uh, you know, that's about it. And she say, I can just have the blow up games and cut that back to only three, nothing else. So on the basis of that, since there were no figures attached to it, I wrote her back and I said, well, I'm assuming then that our you need to clarify is what you're saying that for the bouncy houses, the budget estimate was $2,500 that you're saying, well, if we can't come up with that, we, you know, but that's, are we talking about the bouncy houses or are we talking about the whole, uh, the whole, the whole project? Um, and the way I read this is, well, I could cut some of the money into 2,500, but I want the, all the rest. And so basically she would be asking for something between 5,500 and $7,000 if she cuts a bouncy house out. It still isn't clear to me. Um, but, 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 Peter, but Peter, I have a question. Is, doesn't this relate to everything we had to postpone from last June when it was very rainy or something? Well, that was the that was the reason that she gave me initially for coming to the steering committee. So yeah, the we, we canceled everything for one day or something. Yeah, I mean, there, there was a an afternoon time between the fireworks and the parade when we were going to have the the open houses and, and or the uh, activities at the school. Yeah, yeah, that was exactly, I remember being on the phone, literally at Deerfield Academy. On the phone, we were deciding what to do for safety reasons and practical reasons. And we just canceled a lot of stuff. Um, the Friends of Deerfield did and and the town did at that point because of safety concerns and practicality purposes. So this is kind of 
redoing that from the 350s? My recollection was that it was canceled ahead of time um, and not by the steering committee. Um, Absolutely not. It was canceled. No, it was canceled, it was canceled by the select board. It was canceled by the select board and the Friends of Deerfield Board. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just saying as far as the steering committee, I don't believe we we were involved in it because my recollection is the rec department was handling that piece of it out of their budget with additional support for, I believe, Chris, the food part of it that was gonna be from Friends of Deerfield. Cause I'm, I'm trying to piece it together, but I don't think we ever authorized any money from our committee for that piece of time, I think it was money coming out of the rec department budget. It was not money coming out of the rec department budget. The rec I department agree with Cersei of... on that. Yes, it, it was from your department, Holly. It was not from the rec department budget at all, and it was canceled because of rain, because of yes. safety issues being on the bounce with the bounce houses and not letting the kids go on there and slip and slide all over the place. The money was coming from Friends of Deerfield and the 350th committee. That was going to be the big to do for the kids that day. And it was canceled because of the rain. And then I was told it would we would be able to do it in October when they had whatever they did up in Old Deerfield. And then we weren't included in that at all. I don't know why. I asked and I didn't get an answer. But I know we weren't included because we were. that's what I was told, that we were going to have it on that day instead. And that was you know shushed under the rug too so this was just this is just coming back and basically doing what we were supposed to do in the first place for the kids in town sue so do you have a budget i know you hold this family fun fair or kid fun fair every year do you have a budget for that we have a budget of like fifteen hundred dollars but but the uh Bounce houses have gone up incredibly. Plus, Susie, did you not have to pay? The, you had to pay or, or partially pay for some of the vendors that we canceled? Like the Blue Man was no. I didn't, I didn't have to pay for anybody, but okay. I got a lot of unhappy people. Yeah, I I got yelled at That's by a true. couple people, but there was really nothing much I could do about it. Peter, do I you told them, I told them that we were going to have it in October, and then we didn't have it in October either. Peter, do you recall if we actually had done a vote on funding? Because I don't recall that. I don't think there was any appropriation for that event out of the steering committee. There wasn't. That, that's my recollection, too. And I know, okay. Carolyn, you had said a few times that the rec department could handle that piece of it. Well, generally, Sus Susie runs her home days um, herself. Mm -hmm. You know. No, there's no money coming out of the rec department for that event at all. Uh, I don't have that kind of money in the rec department. <laughs> Most of all my money I get from, you know, my sports programs. And it goes back into my sports programs. Mm -hmm. And anything extra I do is, is extra that I'm pretty much taking away from my sports programs. How much is in the revolving fund right now, Susie? It's like $8,000 or something like that. But I have right. to pay. I, you know, I have all my summer concerts, which I don't get any. That comes out of there, too, and those are getting very expensive. So where was this money to come from? That's what, that's what I'm going around in my head right now. I mean, I remember talking yeah, about trash pickup and all sorts of how do we, what would go where, the food, we, we changed the location because of the lighting several times and all of that, but I don't recall any specific program at the school that involved a budget. 
I thought I thought I had a budget of eight thousand dollars. I thought that's what, and I thought it was coming from um, the three fiftieth committee. And I think the friends were going to pay for the food, and the and the, there was going to be a DJ, and the friends were going to pay for that. And I do believe the steering committee was going to pick up the um, costs for the trash cans and the tables and et cetera like that. I remember submitting a bill to you, an estimate, Peter, um, of what it was going to cost. And you told us at that time, no problem. Well, it probably wasn't at that time. But do we ever vote on it? Do we ever actually formally do it? OK, so so OK, let's get practical here. How much money that was allocated for the 350 is still left over at the 350th steering committee level? Uh, none from the initial budgets. And what's left is that final part of that final appropriation that we got, which we said we'd return whatever we didn't spend. And what is that? And it's about 23000 Okay. So you have that. The Friends of Deerville have 3,800 in the bank. That's the truth. Without going out and trying to raise any more money. Our idea is if we do this June 8th event in collaboration with the rec committee, that we would um, provide all the food, all the beverages, et cetera. And we actually engage, we have a target of three organizations to give in kind, like for juices, you know, chips and sodas and that kind of stuff um, so that we don't totally deplete everything. Um, and so, you know, that's where we're at. I mean, and so, I don't know. It's, it's like this was a 350th event that was planned. I don't exactly know the details of who said what in terms of funding. Um, but we're going to take care of our part of it. And I think it'll be up to $2,000 or $2,500 of food because we're planning for 500 persons. But maybe that's a discussion we have to have. Maybe the friends of Deerfield are off base here in thinking you're going to get 500 persons for this kid's day plus the time capsule bearing. We might be totally wrong. So, I don't think you'll get 500. Um, when I have concerts, I have about three. And when I do the fun day for the kids, I have about 100 kids. But then we have to add the, say, the 100 or so they'll come for the, um, for the burial, the time capsule. So, we're already, so there's already 400 people right there. So 400, 500, same ball field park. Well, if you take out the band, you reduce the amount of people coming by a lot. We won't. We won't. Nobody will come for the burial watching a a box in the ground without the without something to draw their attention. We everybody knows yeah. that. I think that. the con I think the concept is we all collaborate and make it one final event. This is a big event for the town, and we try to get maximum participation. But I'm gonna. I see Diane's hand is up, and I don't know who's managing the meeting, but she needs to talk. I need to talk. I found my notes on April 26th meeting, 2023. Um, we voted uh, the the 350 committee. We voted on uh, four thousand dollars for the post uh, post parade events slash okay, fireworks. Good. All right. I don't know if what if it went to fireworks or what it went to. We'll now, to one of the things to clarify, I guess, Chris, is you're you're talking about providing food, and one of the items in a fairly good size item in this budget uh, from Sue is a cookout. So now we've got two different uh, food menus. So what's no? How do, no, how I think I, th I think I think what Sue is referring to, and and, and Stan and Sue collaborate on this is we need some grills and some gas tanks i think that's the practical and you rent those usually so no, I, get it. I, I mean I, I think that's the practical aspect of this estimate beyond bounce houses and other 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 venue items but 
you know, we're going to use Kathleen Thomas catering again, because we always have, she's reliable and she's certified and we just have met, had no problems whatsoever. And her estimate for, um, for 500 persons, but you can tell me that we're totally wrong on estimating that way is north of $2,000. And again, that's food at cost, today's prices, and no management overhead fees whatsoever. So Sue, how does that affect your budget at all or your proposal? About $2,000, when I talked to Stanley, that was going to be for, for tables and chairs and the grills and all that. That was a number that was given. Well, that, so that's not for the food then? No. No. Not for the food. No. Not for the food and the food staff, if you will, management of it. Remember, we have a post-COVID guidelines on how we have to do this. Oh, no, I... Where where was this going to be? Uh, 500 people is a lot of people. Behind town hall. Uh, has anyone talked to John Pachork? No, but we have, you know, we've we've done that. We have that, you know, three the three hundred people, over three hundred people, three hundred fifty people for the concerts, and it's never been a problem. Okay. But I mean, if the um, three fifty steering committee wants to, you know, dial back the estimate on the number of people that will come, fine, we'll adjust our estimates, but. The friends of Deerfield, and we can vote on it right now, is willing to support the food and beverages associated with 500 persons attending. I'm I'm just not sure. The only other complication, I'm not trying to confuse things, but um, the library, as far as I know, the library project will be started by then, and. I wonder what that does to the general area available. Well, I can tell you when people park for the concert, you know, they park, uh, there's a lot of people that park right by the, the senior center there and they park out on the street. There's, there's really a lot of parking around town hall when you, when you really get into it. Um, they can park over in the savings bank and, you know, uh, and on the North, North main street. And I, I'm out there directing people, and I've really never had a problem with that many, many people. Okay. So for this event between Friends of Deerfield and what's on this budget, we're looking for a ten thousand dollar, three hour event. It's two hours. It's a two hour event. Oh, two hours. So I'd like to respond to Chris's comment that there's money left over and what we were allocated um, because I, I disagree that we have leftover money. We were allocated money in case we needed it, but the presumption was always that we would have help with funding things. We would keep the budget down for our town. And I feel already we have exceeded what we were kind of implying we would be at. And having an additional 7,000-ish dollars of expense for a two-hour event, um, I, I, I find it hard to justify to be responsible with the town's money. Is it a two-hour event or... I, I don't really understand that timetable. One to three. That's what's on the proposed budget proposal. Band, bounce house, painting, cookout, one to three on Tuesday, on June 8th. And why is it one to three? Uh, maybe no, no. maybe that, 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 you can uh, elaborate on that. I don't really understand that. Um, that's what that's what Sue proposed. That's what I put on. That's how long, you know, they usually do a bounce house it's for a couple hours at a time. Or any any of the kids' events are usually about two hours. 
Oh, just because it's kind of peak for the kids and yeah. they, they <laughs> lose interest and yeah. walk away. That's crazy. Okay. I understand that, but I don't think the whole afternoon event is two hours. In terms of when you have a band, when we do the time capsule bearing, I don't think that's just two hours. I think that spans a whole afternoon. I think that was the idea. Hmm. Sue, so how much did you get the band quoted for? For how long? Two hours. So if it's more than two hours, they're going to increase their budget line. I can talk to them about that. Who, who are you talking to for a band? Rock 201. What is it? Rock 201. But I, I mean, I think that all this stuff is working because it's sequencing, too. I mean, when you think about it, it's a sequencing because people that want to listen to the band don't want to be bearing a time capsule. You, you know what I mean? It's like, and, and you know, the kids have a certain time. And when people want to eat, there's a certain time. I think all this can be synced. But I feel like it's, a, I don't know. A one to four or five in the afternoon event. I think it's a big event for the town, weather providing, of course. Uh, in in lieu of, you know, because we don't know exactly what the weather is going to be, um, and I agree with Holly about fiscally being fiscally responsible. I I'm not sure if I want to use our money for bounce houses because you you can if there's if it's at all drizzly or rainy or anything like that you know these the bounce houses get really dangerous and i i mean i feel like they're dangerous anyway and why are you that, depriving the children of the town something that we offered to them at one point and now you are rejecting the children of this town your grandchildren, my grandchildren, my great grandchildren. I mean, we oh. said we were going to do it, and now you are <laughs> neglecting on this. I'm okay, sorry. okay. So, to Stan's point, we did make a commitment when we made cancellation decisions last mid June. We did make a commitment to redo it. Okay, this is the redo. I will tell you that I, we've already voted as the Friends of Deerfield Board, that if the redo can't happen on June 8th because of low weather or whatever, we're giving up. We're not doing it again. We're, it's just done. I mean, because we, we've tried to do this twice and I don't want three strikes, we're out, you know, type thing. And so, you know, so, so Carolyn, to your point is, we could have inclement weather and we could have to cancel it and everything like that. But I think at that point, we come up with another creative solution for some sort of event that might be indoors and that might be more protected from all this weather events. I don't know what else to say. I know, but I, I, I guess I just, from a liability point of view, I've never liked the bounce houses and I, you know, we, Clarify the time, Carolyn. <laughs> I know, I know, uh, but I, a lot of people. I, it's just, and I don't like the bounce houses, and I never have. And I know that we don't aren't responsible for the insurance; they have their own insurance. But um, I know from liability, uh, being on the M, the Mass Inter Interlocal Insurance Advisory Board for the state, that. Bounce yeah. houses is one of your biggest ex exposures for communities. And I, I'm just like, I just hate that. That's all. But remember, Carolyn, also, so we won't have a bounce house. Why don't we get something like the slippery slides? They have those, oh, those where the kids run through and like like a little mouse through different things. It's more yeah. than just bounce would, houses. Yeah, no, I would prefer something different, just... No, the liability point of view. There, are, there are different things on there. There's a, you know, there's a bounce house. There's a double slide. There's obstacle course. 
And then there's a little bounce house for the for the toddler kids. That's what's on. That's what's on there. That's what my got a bid for. So I mean, so all I can share with you because really I don't have kids or grandkids to be perfectly honest. Everyone knows that, but it's like, well, what works? I mean, what works to engage the community, engage families, and to have a event? Event, and we wanted to overlap that event with the bearing of the time capsule. I, I don't know what works mm -hmm. exactly. It's like, well, let's come up with a creative solution to this, to your concerns, Carolyn. I mean, uh, your concerns, I I well know them because I talked to all the brokers, the insurance brokers, et cetera. But it's like, it, there's an alternative. It's a good alternative. Let's just get creative. And, but, I don't think that precludes us from committing you, your your um, um, 350th Steering Committee and our Friends of Deerfield nonprofit from committing to supporting some sort of event that has a general concept. And then, and then we can iron out the details for the next meeting. Does it have to be, does it have to be a cookout? Can we scale down the food menu? Keep the activities, scatter the band, have the band stand, start differently than the kid activities and uh, scale back the food items. Without a cookout, do more of an ice cream, ice cream social type of thing like you did, or is it, do you still want to do the cookout? No, no, we'll do whatever you want. Oh, but okay. I'm just under... trying to figure out how we can modify this. And, uh, but, but Diane, our, understanding, our understanding was that it would span a few hours and people want to eat, you know? So that's why we did that. This is uh, totally in addition to anything we ever had planned. It, it was never on a budget or our plans or whatever, but we're committed to the bearing of the time capsule and to collaborating with this event and, you know, and making whatever refreshments need to be available. That's all I'll say for the Friends of Deerfield, because I think the board and I have discussed this in extensively, and we're committed to that. But look what how successful the Founders Day was with um, ice cream. We could have ice cream and we could have, you know, soda and chips, and which is cheaper. Then you wouldn't have to rent um, grills. Um, we could we could have face painting. We could have balloon man. We could have those kind of things that and the band, you know. Um, that's and and we're totally committed to that. If that's yeah, but but but, but, re, but please realize that we're collaborating with the recreation committee and the three hundred and fifty steering committee. We want your direction on that. Yeah, we're we're just we're just trying to help. We're like a partner, but we're a minority partner. And so, in, you know what I mean by that. But, um, and so, you know, just if you have a different definition of how the day should go, we'll do it. But the one thing I will tell you for the friends of Deerfield, if things get rained out again, we're tired of that rain outs. We're, we're really <laughs> oh, tired. That's of rain outs. totally understandable. I think we're all tired of rain, guys. <laughs> But well, as I mean, the other thing too is our budget is going to close anyway. If it if it goes beyond that, we're not going to have a budget to deal with. Yeah, we can't. I mean, the three fiftieth budget's over with. Yeah. And we were we were due to close it out in May, so I'm. This is another, you know, thing that we we're going to have to address with the. Uh, <laughs> With with Brenda, but I, I I'm just back to this. I guess the cookout and the and the grills. If, if Chris, if you're providing the food or or Thomas's, then what do we need grills for? Well, I, there's all a limited infrastructure that caterers have for this type of thing, <laughs> and if they think they're going to deal with 500 people, they need multiple grills and they need to be flipping. That's too big. That's too whatever. Big to be but okay, so. Yeah. Well, we, I guess we had a vision that by combining, we'd actually get more people out. 
Oh, I think but the vision is fine. You're oh. telling you're on the ground in the town. If you're telling us that people won't show up and they won't want food, then we can scale back that expectation. But we were planning for a fine finale that would be actually pretty well attended. A just an idea of how it would go. Sue would have the uh, activities for the children starting. As that winds down, you offer them the ice cream. They stroll around to the front of the building and the capsule is buried and the band can play on. I, I, I think that we're sounds open to anything. Like, but I instead of uh, the food, that's, that's, that's a big project in itself, having food for that many people. You know, we are open to anything. We just pledged support because that was the original vision from June of 2023. I mean, if you want to do any alternative plan, we're going to support it and we're going to, we're going to fund it, but, okay. and it, even if it saves money. Then we have something else for another project in Deerfield, maybe later in the year that has nothing to do with the 350. Well, what can we offer, Peter, Carolyn, Holly? What do, what can we offer? You know, they can iron out the details, but what is, where where are we gonna, um, how we help and make it happen? Well, I'm just trying to figure out what do we actually need if we're not, if there isn't a separate barbecue. I mean, do we need tables and chairs for 500 people? Is this what we're looking at on here? I mean, that's, that's, that's big. That's too big. Yeah. yeah. I, well, you don't need that if you're not having people showing. eating food. Yeah. Well, um, normally, Susie, when she has her band, Susie, right? You just ask people to bring a chair. They yeah. bring their own chairs, right? Yeah. People bring their own chairs. Yeah. yeah I think people bring their own food too, lots of times. Yeah. Well, and then and we can say we're going to have ice cream and and some soda, you know, soda, you know, drinks, having drinks and and ice cream and um, you know, some light snacks rather than barbecue. Yeah. I mean, a barbecue is another whole level of, of stuff. I mean, there's a whole lot of volunteerism that goes into putting something yeah. like this together. Somebody has to set up the okay, table. So, so, so would you still have the kids stuff? That's that's a key question. Would you still have well, the kids? I, I mean, I feel like having painting, face painting and <clears throat> balloon man and that kind of stuff is 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 really subtle, is, is enough. I mean, the kids are coming in and they have ice cream and snacks and and balloons and Face painting, that's pretty good. I mean, that's enough to draw. That's people. very sparse, Carolyn, for kids to come just to have your face painting and get a balloon. So yeah, really how many kids are going to remember at the bounce house event when they're five years old going forward? Yeah, I guess so. that's a fleeting yeah. event. They, they're yeah. in it for 15 minutes. They have fun. Are they going to carry that with them for the rest of their life as a memory? I yeah. mean, I think yeah, that's yeah. really pushing it. Okay, so so I have a suggestion. <clears throat> and it, it has some flexibility built into it. I think, didn't someone in your committee say that there was $4,000 somewhere along the line allocated for this? I did. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah. <laughs> You're thinking for round four. I found it on, yes, I found it. That's fine. We, we, can, we, we can believe it. Okay, so there was okay. a $4,000 upper limit mm -hmm. estimate okay. for that so, general event. So I suggest I suggest to you guys, and it's your decision, that you say, okay, we'll organize this kind of a scaled down or a refined event that's $4,000 from the 350th steering the Friends of Deerfield have already voted to allocate 2,000 or 2,500, I don't know the meeting minutes, 
towards, you know, refreshments, et cetera. And based on what you're saying is you don't want a full scale food thing. You want more ice cream and stuff like that. So we've already allocated that money. I mean, if we have to subsidize something else on the other side to help you out, if, if something is a little more expensive than we expected, we'll do it. I mean, I, I, I think we just need to be flexible here and say between the two of us, you know, we've got $6,500 and we're going to make it happen. Should work. And So I don't know. Maybe there's a vote that you have to remake on your on your committee, and there's a vote that we have to remake on our committee. Well, um, there's definitely a vote. I think we have to remake. I mean, remote, yeah. that was for an event last fall and or in last summer, and it didn't happen. But that's also not voting a flat amount that's going in. That's an upper limit, and that's that's what we figured when we started talking about tables and chairs and garbage cans and and everything else so i i think we need to start back but i agree with you that you know we made a commitment for that kind of event that it's a, a i really don't personally have any problem with following through with that idea and i think the notion of combining that event with the with the, the capsule bearing the capsule is a really good idea i think that that turns it in more to a family occasion and that harks okay. back to something that Diane and I were talking about earlier today. We'll get to it in a minute, but the kids said, well, when are you going to get our bells back? Which means to me that creating those bells had a significance for those kids. And when you look at the bells, you realize that. And going to Founders Day and seeing their bells hung up there really is going to affect their memories for the future. That's why my comment for the bouncy house in, in terms of Stan, I'm sorry. That's it's was something that they created is important to them, and that's what they'll remember. Something that's given to them, eh, it's like everything else that's given to them. So I'm thinking we can still give them something, but we don't need to get quite as elaborate. But by having the joint, if the kids are going to attend the capsule burial, one of the things that we were talking about is putting their time bells in the capsule. So well, they maybe, can be maybe they don't want one part and carry through with a significant event, 350th event by participating in that capsule burial. And I like I like that. That's the that's the continuity and that's where the kids have a link to the burial itself. It's yeah, not yeah. going to be two things where the kids are going over here to, to play in the bouncy houses just so their parents can come and watch the time capsule burial. That's really another event. And Diane was talking about it at that event where she's talking about, well, why are we doing this? What do these bells symbolize? And we can do the same kind of thing at the time capsule barrier. What are we doing this for? And so I really like the, the notion that we're putting these two events together. I think it's, personally, if we could tone down or cut some of the money out of this budget, and go to four thousand dollars <laughs> since we made the original commitment. I I, I can see doing that. Yeah, when it comes to, when it comes to the 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 bells from Founders Day, I have to defer to Diane and the people that work closely with these students and with these teachers. Um, yeah, maybe some of them want them for a souvenir. But someone might put them in the time capsule. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that, Chris. And, and in fact, but, that's under discussion right now. But, but you know what? I, I'm, you know, we're totally flexible how you guys manage that situation, and we'll accommodate in any way. And if we have to give certificates or something like that, whatever, we'll friends of Deerfield will do the certificates mm -hmm. and stuff like that. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying I like the linkage, Chris. I like the linkage. Yeah, well, I'm just saying the, that's the a linkage. Them. It's simple. It's simple. But you guys are running that show in that respect. So, Sue, how are we doing? We moving forward? I have to go back to the committee. and I, I know what the committee wants. Um, okay. And it might not work on this day, I guess. Because, you know, we were going to, we were just going to have, you know, all those blow up things. And it seems like you guys don't want to have that. Well, so maybe well, we should just not participate in this day. I well, guess. didn't you I'm name a whole bunch of, op of options like the obstacle course and yeah. some tunnel and things yeah, like that? Uh, it sounds like you guys don't want to do any of that. Well, I don't no, think no, that's no, not no. how we came apart. Cross, we're, we, we're mulling it, but we're not just, you know, say no on anything other than bouncy houses get scary for town liability that's about it yeah. but uh the other ones were very much uh options okay. look into it we definitely want to support you and we want to be part of this with you okay. all right so i uh that's why i'm asking how it's working towards you as far as the finances and even us cutting down from a cookout to a less it actually and the ice cream would be less at labor intensive. People bring your own chairs and uh, get a strolling crowd. That's it worked for Founders Day. It'll, it should be able to work um, for the time capsule and Children's Fun Day. Well, you could also go the food truck route too. That's an option if you choose to have that. Yeah. Sure. If that's something that's doable, if that, I'm just throwing that out there because that's something we always. But, uh, I, friends of Deerfield, if you still want to. Uh, do the ice cream. Right. Yeah. Well, you, you I mean, so again, I again, know. I have, I have to admit, I'm 2000 miles away and I haven't been there for a lot of these events. And, but I understand Founders Day turned out okay. However, however you guys organized it. it I mean, yeah. flexible, we're flexible. Kathy, Kathleen Thomas catering, you know, company is, is flexible in what we have to do. And we just want to make sure it's safe for anyone. I mean, that 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 is why Friends of Deerville, we have a few philosophies and one of them is all of our fruit serving will be safe. And the other is that we want to make it affordable and accessible to everyone. Those are our strategies. So whatever you guys want to do, we can flex. We can flex. We can, we can, I mean, you did it on the ground. I never was there and you did a great job. So do you have uh, volunteer type crews that can set up and do all the things that you're, you're planning to do? Uh, um, the blow up things they come and set them up themselves and i just have people from the committee supervise at each at each um event okay yeah so that that's that's not a that's not a cost or or a concern no it's really the physical costs so what's the issue at the moment money what are we what are we pondering? I think that <laughs> well I'm I'm going back to the minutes. And the minutes were Sue had arranged for um a couple of things and the figures provided was twenty eight twenty. And we approved up to four thousand. Okay, okay. But not approved 4,000. And um, I I was trying to remember, um, you know, how, how this came to be because, and then I looked back and I wasn't at that meeting. So no wonder it was nothing I had in my notes. Um, so, you know, given that a band that's $1,200 right now for two hours, and if we want them longer than two hours, it's going to go up. Um, I'm just concerned that this is just going to get 
you know, much higher than anticipated um, to try to have activities for the kids, which I think you do have to have some. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know where you draw the line on that. Well, one of the most expensive things on here is generators. Just the generators cost five hundred dollars. the The amount of the fees have gone up a lot since last June. Um, and I don't. So I don't know if anybody has a generator. A couple. Of, we need a cut like two generators. We could use. I don't know if there's anybody who could. I don't know of anyone. But I don't know if anybody has. You know, if we can find a couple of generators that cuts the cost down a lot. For for what, uh, Susie? What are the you need generate because you can't. Um, you know, if you have a band, I need the electric that comes off the Butler building for the band, and so I need generators to blow up the blow ups. That's what blows up the blows up blow ups has the generators. So the company doesn't supply their own generators. Yeah, but they're five. They do, but they're five hundred dollars. That's oh, what I'm, I'm saying. Sorry. Oh, okay. I'm that's, sorry. that's a big. That's a big expense right there for two okay. generators that we'd have to have. So I don't know. Okay, that's, so that's so, a lot of the expense right there. So we're talking about dollars here and there, but actually, I actually am going to pose this question, to Carolyn, because I mean she represents the select board. What do you want this afternoon to be? Well, we want it to be a fa family afternoon because it's really the younger kids that will remember, like Founders Day what i mean it's it's generational founders day was generational but we are trying to gear towards the younger kids so they will have memories when the time capsule is unburied um i think in my mind it it is um but it it's also to bring in the generations because it is a you know community celebration i want to make sure that it's community wide so you're definitely attract, attracting multiple multiple age persons. But I think if you get a band, like Susie's talking about, you have some kid activities, you have some food, then we're pretty well covered because, you know, you're attracting, I mean, people, it's all free. People don't have to pay. And if it's a lovely day like Founders Day, then it will be magnificent. I just, I'm just hesitant myself be based on my experience and background um, with bouncy houses and stuff like that. I don't, especially if it's at all inclement, it's terrible. So I don't, I'm, that's, that's where I'm coming from. That's, and that's personal. That's because I don't want the town exposed for some, somebody getting hurt. I mean, it's just awful if someone gets hurt. So, um, I mean, I'm, you're looking at it from a money point of view, but it is awful if somebody gets hurt. So I, I would rather have us not have those kind of activities. And we can, st I mean, we didn't have those activities for Founders Day and we had lots of kids, lots of kids. It was so thrilling. Um, so I, I don't feel that we have to do that kind of stuff to attract kids because it's distracting from the main event. The main event is celebration of the community's 350th. Like, like Peter said, come and bury your bell so you can dig it up in 50 years. I mean, that's, that's pretty cute. But if, if kids are at bouncy houses, they're not going to come and see their bell buried. But I mean, that's just my personal experience as, as a mother and a grandmother with kids. <laughs> You want you want some attraction, but you want them to focus a little bit. So I think if so we look Peter, at the two events too, I mean the burial is not going to take much more than about a half an hour. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, I mean, yes, but a getting the crowd time. there, having some talks, burying the thing, it's a short event. So you I see these these two events as being sequential and at the same time drawing people earlier on to see the burial and then to have fun in terms of a day of of, of a band and 
food and and whatever. Um, so I think I think Peter, I mean, based on what I've heard from all of your committee, um, <clears throat> needs to be a little bit of scale back on the bounce house aspect specifically, but not necessarily the other activities for the children. Yeah, and and you know and. So you still can have that going. Um, scale back on the uh, from the Friends of Deerfield side on exactly what we provide for, you know, refreshments or food. And uh, so I think that I think that you know, resurrecting that four thousand dollar allocation is not a bad idea, and leave it up to experts like Susie to negotiate with people to get all the things you want with the reduced liability that Carolyn referred to is not a, not a bad idea at all. And, um, and I'm fine to uh, have my board, um, you know, reconfirm that we'll put, you know, $2,500 into this event, even if it isn't in ice cream and something else. I, I the timing of it is after lunch if you know most people have fed their kids and then it's before dinner so I don't I don't you know having an actual cookout food you know like hamburgers and it just complicates it and so if if the timing if we're keeping that timing having more ice cream kind of kind of thing makes sense brownies and cookies and things like that yeah however whatever you want yeah. but i would definitely say ice cream because ice cream is always a hit if it's hot hot weather and hopefully we're going to have a nice day the, the other thing too is you're going to have people coming and going this yeah. isn't going to be a crowd that's 500 people and they just sit there and soak it up i mean you, right. you may have 500 overall so things with ice cream or other, you know, light refreshments, they can be available throughout the event as people come in or or whatever. Um, like to give them a chance to shovel the dirt back and pose for pictures for their family as, <laughs> as each shovel goes in one shovel at a time. You know, and just even have a table where uh, people can come and say, which was harder to pick, cucumbers or tobacco? You know, and put that and the result of that question put into the time capsule, because all the kids that are now adults and older people that pick cucumbers and tobacco, that that doesn't happen anymore. So you know, having that part of the time capsule, you know, kind of thing too. I mean, make that more of a community kind of thing. I don't know, something like that. I mean. And people that do last minute drops into the time capsule. Yeah. That, I mean Yeah, can, you can we can do a few of those. Yeah. Yeah. I mean just those. just have a those. question and then somebody could say, you know, Joe Smith, it was much harder to pick, you know, cucumbers and tobacco. And and then so you sign up, have people sign up which side is, you know, which was harder because none of those that just doesn't happen even now. So in 50 years somebody can pull that out and say, oh my gosh, they're talking about cucumbers and tobacco. Because of course, the oh, most- well, Almost every most, kid did for a while. Just, just so yeah. everyone knows- the, the most country kids did, but we didn't, down my way, never did any of that tobacco or cucumber picking. Maybe I came from <laughs> half the city, I'm sorry. I was people well, don't we do can things. have other, I can tell you that you sweated multiple times for- uh, I can tell you a lot- Pay bills. But, so, um, but but just so everyone knows, there's an inner stainless steel time capsule that will be welded shut. And then there's an outer portion, and mainly uh, Friends of Deerfield are populating that because it's inside a plastic encasement from Pelican. So we can drop things in the last moment, seal that, and drop it down. Right. We could just have a a roll of paper and just have people sign their names, which was, you know, which did you think was the yeah, who attended the or, who or, or just to sign in, 
you were here. Just yeah. like like Diane had kept her book, who rang the bells? I mean, I I think spur of the moment too is kind of good. Yeah. But we can do that because of the two different aspects of right. Right. the inner capsule and the outer capsule. Right. And if you had a table of a couple of sign-in kind of things, then people would want to sign in if they knew it was going to get buried that day. I, I mean, oh, I, so that, I mean, that in itself is kind of an event. And, and like I said, I would, you know, I was, I, I'm half joking about the, Good idea. The, the, the cucumbers and the tobacco, but that happened in, you know, people, older people remember that. And ki most kids, teenagers who up here remember picking as part of you that's what you look did. i worked at oxford factory that was my first management job at 17 years old and they gave me this trophy of a a pickle and i found it in february when i was back in massachusetts and all the storage <laughs> stuff and they took it to pvma they thought it was an artist <laughs> Well, see what I mean. I couldn't believe it. I was ready to throw it away. I just took a picture of it, and I was fine. But but all the employees gave it to that. Yeah. Well, but see, that's the kind of stuff that I think that we should be thinking about. It doesn't cost anything, but it it made people just like signing Diane's book for ringing the bell. That that meant something. So I I don't know. I mean, we just need to figure figure out a few things like that. Okay, but let's get back to Peter. You're running this yeah. show here, this meeting, because it's your meeting. But I think we do need to. You didn't do need to get consensus amongst yeah. your committee. How much would you put towards this day? And then I'll, Stan and I will do the same thing for yeah. our friends Peter. of Deerfield, so we know what we're working with, and then then we collaborate and get creative and figure it out. Um, can I, I ask think, a quick question? How much do we have in our budget at the moment, Peter? The the total remaining, I think, about twenty three thousand. So we can't even allocate allocate uh, for because we don't have it. No, you have twenty three thousand. Not twenty three. Not oh, twenty three hundred. Twenty three thousand. <laughs> and whatever we don't use for this last time capsule will be going back to the town. Correct. Correct. Yeah. That's the intention. We voted, we voted, remember at last town meeting, we voted in case Holly, because um, the parade, Holly's parade was before July 1st. Um, so we uh, allocated more money in case Holly had problems. And she didn't. I make a motion that we allocate $4,000 for the time capsule rec committee um, hurrah on June 8th. Am I wording it right? Is it Before you vote, can I say one more thing? Don't you think that maybe Susie and her committee and um, the friends should get together and come up with a new game plan and a new estimate before you vote 4,000? Sure. What if it's 5,000 or what if it's 3,000? Okay. So that we come up with a new yeah. Well, if you want to estimate, re Susie, sure. are you game for that? I yeah. think what you can do is you can vote an upper limit yeah. authorization, but it's it's got to be followed up by, okay, now the reason for putting a budget on it, Stan, is you know what your limit is. And you then you've got a limit to work within. If you, if you go and say, okay, we're not going to set any kind of limit today and uh, go come up with a new scheme, and it turns out to be five thousand, and that's not going to get. Well, appropriate. maybe the upper limit should be five thousand. What? Maybe the upper limit should be five thousand. I would like the five thousand because with inflation and everything, I'm sure whatever happens, the blue man or the or the Carabelle the clown or whatever, their prices have all gone up. Holly. Um. I think that, again, going back to the fiscal responsibility, I didn't know we had voted this because, honestly, I wasn't at the meeting. I didn't recall it. Um, I think we should stand with what we originally allocated 
and that is based on Sue's presented estimate of $2,820, we authorized up to $4,000. And so I would like to make a motion that we reinstate our original offer up to $4,000 and nothing more from the town of Deerfield. Well, that's the motion you have on the table. That, that, that's the motion that Diane made, basically. It, no, Diane said authorized four thousand. I'm saying up okay. to okay. as we yeah. did originally. Okay, no, that okay. And that way, Sue can actually get some people signed in to know what whether or not it's well, happening. You know, I I think Sue really needs to work with her committee to to say, okay, uh, this is what we can get from the steering committee up to this amount. Uh, what can we alter? And drop the bouncy houses and what can we do to uh, get the best bang for our buck or best buck for our bang or whatever it is um and you know chris too if if uh, friends of deerfield if they were looking to put putting a fairly high end amount of money into food and we can drop that down then perhaps you've got money left in your budget to increase or you know provide some funding for some of this other thing that's in Sue's budget right now. So it won't be just four, it could be five or um, if you're balancing on your end. But I well, think- I mean, I, I, mean I don't, okay. So let me just make a motion right now in our board meeting that we are authorizing at this point, $2,000 towards this June 8th event. And because we discussed that, seen cost estimates, et cetera, they're probably conservative, but we are willing to do that. So uh, that's my motion. Stan, you have to second it and we have to approve it. All right. I, I'll second well, that we will spend up to, up to $2,000 for this event. And I'm good with that. All right, so we've got a motion on the floor uh, from Diane or from Holly, both of up to four thousand dollars. I'll uh, second um, Holly. <laughs> okay, you second Holly. I'll second. She can make the motion. I don't know if I said up to or not, but I, is, I told totally her. Any, is there any further discussion? No, that way. She right, didn't. time for vote. Um, I Diane. Diane. I yes. Carolyn. Yep. Holly, you up for, yep. Yep. All right, we're good. Um, the only thing from an accounting point of view, um, we need to let Brenda know, uh, no, really no later than end of April. So if um, from expense point of view, how, you know, our money that we're spending with 350th, we really have got to get the bills, um, you know, if we can prepay them for, um, I mean, because June 8th is too late to get the bills into Brenda afterwards. Yeah. yeah. She has to clean the book, you know, clear the books. So, um, but if, what I did with the parade is um, for like the bands that were booked, she cut the checks ahead and she got them to me a few days before the parade. So yeah. at the completion of the parade, um, the a volunteer that was at that location handed the checks to the bands that oh, participated. Man, that was perfect. But and and fun. she was, Brenda was wonderful to work with. Yeah. It's really tough for her to be doing stuff in right. June. And, and if we can get this, you know, sorted out this next month in April so that she can cut the checks and clean the books up, that's good. Because it, it really is, a, it's awful last minute. Yeah. Well, I have one question on that, Carolyn. Can she cut the checks before this event? Because yeah. I know sometimes when we dealt with her in the past, we she would not pay like for some of these rental things until the day of, and this is after. Well, it's because they 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 have to um, they have for in a rental situation. That's but if Susie's booking a band, say. She's 
you know, if we can write the check for the band before, you know, the event, that kind of thing, because it, um, you know, it's just hard for her. It's, yeah. it's a lot of work to, you know, because it's the entire town, expenditures across the entire town. Yeah, and, and what the agreement we had was, again, from a responsible perspective, was if it, everything went kaput, I just would turn the checks back in yeah. um, and then she could void them. But she yeah. did have them prepared ahead um, yeah. and that did help a lot. Yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, obviously you wouldn't, if, if, if the band didn't show up, Susie wouldn't give the check to the band. <laughs> But the idea is that you could, you knew what your expenses were going to be, like Holly said, up front. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, Carolyn, more if we got rained out for the whole day, well then, okay, then, you know, we may have some cost of having somebody's equipment held for us or something, but it would be another settling up after. Excellent. Susie, so do you, uh, can you take that then back to your committees and, and see what you can come up with in terms of a scheme for the, and, you know, get back to us as soon as you can, because we've, we've basically got one meeting before we're encroaching on danger uh, time-wise for this budget. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. We'll have a meeting and see what they want to do. If they want to okay. go forward with this or if they want to go off on their own. All right. Um, moving on then. Um, can, can I make one comment? Um, on the um, proposal from Sue, it indicated that the burial of the time capsule would be at 2.30 between the 1 and 3. I'm just thinking, oh, like, if it's only going to be 1 to 3, then maybe we don't disrupt that and then bury it. You know, if it's going to be three hours, well, then in the middle of it would be okay. But it almost seems like you'd be drawing people away from activities that they don't want to be drawn away from if it's only a two-hour event yeah i think you know we can we can work with sue and and come up with a joint plan of of action i mean i think I'd, you know i'd be willing to sit down with sue and and or and diane or and stan or, or whatever just get it get both both parties together in a small group and to see if we can sort out a program and yeah, how, to get a, how to get a carrot in front of the crowd, you know. Yeah, well, it really exactly. is. But how, yeah. you know, how do you get to everybody <laughs> participating in both events? And that's the, you know, that's the key. I think having two events is a big draw. But, you know, it was it's sort of like Founders Day. I mean, I thought it was a great day. But people mm -hmm. came and went. It was a it was a cumulative was kind of thing, fluid. and there were okay. you know there was ice cream yep. there and and yep. a band there. But I, I, the the biggest attraction, I think, for what drew people there was actually the bell ringing. Yeah, I agree. And, yep. You know, and that they won't forget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Watching the kids get lifted by the bell string. But that's that's why I'm thinking the the time <laughs> capsule may be the same thing. I think. Diane's, uh, you know, having a logbook and allowing people then who sh who came to the burial to actually sign that. I participated in this event to the 350th and then put that book in the time capsule yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. You didn't like my cucumbers or tobacco choice? Well, that too. I, I like that <laughs> idea, Carolyn. I think it's great. One of the oh, things that I could, I could do is uh, create another one of these uh, scavenger hunt kind of things of where is this in Deerfield? Oh, we never and, found and it. And if you don't, if you can't do it, <laughs> and then you don't get your ice cream. Well, <laughs> I just think I mean, we could never figure mind. out something. That's an idea, though, is having puzzles yeah. of some sort. Yeah. Well, you could. Just, but you got to come up with pencils. <laughs> I just think it's really, we need to remember that kids, most kids pick tobacco or pick cucumbers or had something to do with that kind of thing you know 
So, because yeah. it's not anymore, it's already not more. And oh, yeah. I don't have that many kids involved. And so, I don't know. It was, just a thought. it was just a thought. It seemed like a fun thing. And it was a good good way to draw in older people. Mm -hmm. I like it. I think it's a just, great idea. Yeah. Just like we are trying to draw in kids, you know, and then it would be buried. It would be buried in there. And, yeah. and you need to live stream this. I, you need I, to live stream it because there's a lot of people around the country that know Deerfield that would want to be part of this. Watch this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so we have to set that all up, but friends of Deerfield can figure that out with all the technical people. Don't worry about that. Anyway. Sue, I think our next meeting is April 29th. You want to 29th. mark it down. 29th? 28th? Yes. 29th, yeah. 29th, like I said. Okay. Just so uh, you can work on your plan and come back to us. But I don't we think we're meeting that night. That's annual town meeting. Yeah, that's oh, it. I mean, okay. We're gonna have to do it earlier, but um, oh, I also right. think that that's a good oh, good, good reason to meet earlier is because so that we can solidify what's happening at, as an event. When when you is want to do it at the twenty fifth, twenty second on the week before? Um, yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to do the week before. Well, um, week before. Yeah, at least because um, but I'm I'm wondering if we should do it uh a little bit earlier. I'm, I'm wondering if we should um, do it like the 15th, just because we don't have a solid game plan yet for this. The 15th um, is a holiday. Oh, the 15th is a holiday. Oh, shoot. Interesting. I'm, I'm not available on Mondays um, in April other than. How about is every everyone would any, everyone be available for like the 16th? April 16th. April. I am not. Oh, okay. Uh, Holly, what? When could you meet on that week? Week of the fifteenth. When? What day? I, could I, you... I I'm away. I can't oh, meet any time that week. Uh, gosh, two weeks is kind of soon. If we did the eighth. Yeah, but you know what, Carolyn? It's the issues that you guys have as a committee is pretty simple at this point. Just You're going to resolve them in the next week. All right. So is that enough time for you? Carolyn, is the town meeting on the 29th? Yes, it is. Yes. Could we meet the week before other than the Monday? Yeah, um, we could meet the 23rd, maybe. I'm fine Tuesday with that. The, Tuesday the 23rd? Yeah. Uh, Pat, you don't think there's anything... Uh, you don't have a calendar, but I don't think I don't have anything in my book right now for the twenty third. So I think we could um, do a Zoom meeting without any issues. I, right. I can I can try. Okay. I, I I just can't promise. Okay, so let's let's do the twenty third then, because six thirty. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, Sue, if you could send your proposal to us even a day or so ahead of time. That way, even like Holly can take a look at it. If she, has, if she can't make it, she can add some input and we can get an idea of what's going on. I don't we'll see Sue off. anymore. No, well, she left. She left? Oh. She's gone. All righty. Okay, she's off doing her plans. Good for her. <laughs> yeah. She, <was> <laughs> she got the okay, so off she goes. <laughs> Uh, All right, uh, just the, the next item on the agenda is a time capsule, and it's just a quick question, I think, to Holly is, can, can you just give us uh, where are we with that, and is, um, uh, hey, I've not problems. heard, I've not heard from other than Peter, any of our committee with any of the stuff, so I have what Rocky has, I have what I have, and I have what Peter said is going in but that's yeah. all i have and i shared that spreadsheet with everybody okay. but also i was hoping like diane what you're adding do um, i bring it to you or bring no you don't have to bring it you were supposed to just let me know to add it okay. to the list so we could review the list um, and carolyn i don't know from town hall perspective if there's anything um you want put in there 
maybe no. from your board because you saw us through the whole celebration year? Um, well, I think Pat, um, by then we, we, Pat, when would the town report be done? It'll be done for the, the meeting, right? <laughs> yeah. So we'll have the town report, but. Um, I probably won't get the report back from the printer until the 26th, depending on when I send it to them. Okay. Well, we, when do, we when do we it. have to have it sealed? Have what By sealed? the tech school. It'll be sealed at the end of May. It oh, doesn't oh. have to be sealed before that. Okay. okay. Well, then we can put a town report in there for sure. Okay. That would be the one thing, Holly, because um, we would want that. I'd have to ask what, what the other members are thinking of, but in my mind for sure would be the town report would be the one thing that we would want um okay so holly for for like the a couple of things that i have i should just hang on to them until roughly the the event time and then i can we'll have a, a collection at that point so rocky's not collecting things for He's, this he yeah, he hasn't continued to collect because nothing's been offered to him. Yeah. And because I thought it was kind of redundant for you or I to just bring things to him to then get them back. Um, I was thinking if other people in town gave him things, oh, he would yeah. continue to collect. But um, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a, a social media person. I mean, Diane, do, do we ask? Do we not ask? Oh, the community. I can, I can certainly mention it at a select board okay. meeting on selectman's comments. You know that we are still um, accepting things for the um, time capsule. Okay, yeah, I think that's a good idea. And yeah, maybe maybe Carolyn, you can ask uh, Trevor to put up something on Deerfield now, just an yeah. announcement. Yeah, Trevor would be a good one to do it through. I know Stan, you've collected a few unusual things. From the mm -hmm. 300 yeah, that I people did. have been giving you yeah. stuff. But uh... that's on the outside. Okay. So oh, everything yes. that you have so far on that list that I haven't seen, um, will it fit in the time capsule? Or is it some things that are too big? Oh, and no. is everything going to be sealed in plastic? Um, the, the, the stuff we've got right now, Stan, would fill half of the time capsule. Okay. You know, remember, don't worry about has being be overcrowded. In, everything <laughs> has to be put in sealed bags, you know, plastic bags, according to the building inspector. Building inspector? The building, building. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like, okay, so there's <laughs> like these technical aspects of water intrusion, things like that. And okay. so, but the good news is we're going to well shut the interior time capsule that is the official time capsule, yeah, right? Yeah. That'll be welded shut. Yeah. I don't think anything's going to get into that. But on the exterior side, that's that plastic encasement. It's a right? pelican. But but it's, it's pelican. Cool. It's pelican is probably better than <laughs> steel, steel, to be yeah. totally honest. And so we we Different things that we're collecting, we will put it in ziplocs and things protect like that. it in its own way and, 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 <laughs> and, and, and drop it into the perimeter of of that. I mean, it's maybe a little over, but you know what? I'm going to be dead and gone, so I don't really care if we over engineer it. They're going to go. Is this what a ziploc looks like? Wow, I've got at least twenty five of them. Should we reuse them? <laughs> By then they won't allow guarantee you. They won't exist. Anymore. Well, anyway. Well well, I'll just announce it and we can figure out how we're gonna pack it. Um we get to see what people bring forward. How's that? Yes, that yeah, have Trevor do it. That's a, a good way to we're fine. bring it up. But that's a good idea. Okay, uh, Diane, well, why don't you report out on what you told me earlier, just so everybody okay, knows. Well, um, Friday, I received a email 
from Kathleen Rochelle, Rich if I'm pronouncing it right, who's the art teacher from the grammar school. And it sort of caught me off guard because it was, hey, the kids have been wondering when they're getting their bells back. I don't know what to tell them. Are they, are they being displayed some somewhere? What should I tell them? And I sat on that for a while because it caught me off guard. And I realized we never really did talk to the kids about keeping their bells. It was a whole big project at school and they were very enthusiastic, but we never had the forethought to think of where they were going. And in our enthusiasm, we decided the bells were gonna be our bells and we were gonna put them in the time capsule. So. This morning, very early, I wrote back to Catherine that we hadn't given it thought and it wouldn't be fair. And she said, yeah, I don't want to appear like a liar because I had thought the kids were getting the bells back. So uh, we went back and forth and um, I said I was going to attempt to get the bells today or get permission to have the bells. She replied that she would ask the students which ones wanted to claim their bells back because they did mean something. As Peter said, these bells really did mean something to them or find out if anybody wanted to put their bell in the time capsule. And then I added um, to Catherine that could she ask the children to do in any format a letter to the future that we could put in the time capsule and it would be a letter to themselves I'm not sure if she's gonna work on it. Um, I hope they do in to some capacity. Uh, but what I'm doing is to humbly ask, can we have the bells back so I can bring them back to the children? Is that, I mean, we like them. I have them on zip drive. Pat has them on zip drive. Peter has them on a zip drive or, or, or whatever those sticks are called. They have them on those That's little sticks. Stick. And I've sent them. So anyways, um, Without any yeah. objection, could we claim the bells back to give back to the students? But I, I think, you know, I, I really like that option of giving the kids a choice. Yeah, she and, said. You know, and, and I think a number of them are going to put them in the time capsule. I don't know how they'll find them. Did you see how many bells? That's, 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 you know thing. what? I mean, you know oh what? my God, trying to find you know the one. I have an idea. I, them back. I, I have an idea. Think. I have an yeah. idea. You just go for five that you want in the time capsule. And I don't know how you do that by lottery or I'm whatever. Sure she'll, find, she'll find a few. I'm but sure just find five of them. A, a, and, a reasonable and then they, then they can Then they can write also why they wanted it to go in the time capsule. Something, what, was the, something. what was their rationale for wanting to donate it to the time capsule? Yeah. And you cup, couple that with the actual bells, and you only go for five. Less is more in this well, case. We'll see, we'll see what we get. But, uh, get their, are we okay with yeah. me blaming them back? And who has them at the moment? Stanley or oh, Holly? You, know who has them. Them. you have them? I have them in my basement, in a, already in a plastic tub, ready to be put in the well, time capsule. You're going to have to pull out that tub. And uh, I think it'd be. <laughs> I, I, we wouldn't want the kids to have hard feelings. As I said, we never really set our intentions, but we enthusiastically just wanted them because they were so cool. You know? Well, I think we're basically- I, I, think, I think you make this decision a bigger issue and get them to write something down why they made that decision. Yeah. Oh make yeah, now, I would like more. I, as I said, as I said something to, uh, to Catherine um, that I would like, a letter, a letter to the self, which could be about the bells or whatever, but I definitely want them to have some form of contribution. And um, we'll go. I will tell you, not to change the subject, I will tell you that the, my grandson's class in third grade, um, Memorial Day week, that week of Memorial Day, is sort of a downtime in school. They are going to be doing a project for something to go into the time capsule. Oh, good, oh, good. They're thinking, they're forward thinking. Yeah, oh, I, good. They're forward yeah, thinking. I saw the one. gentleman who was in charge, the, the, the teacher, the Mr. I forgot what his name is, Kyle, Kyle, whatever his name is. And he's he's going to do it with the kids. Oh, great. 
I'm so excited about that, Stan. That's the kind of thing that you want to happen. I mean, yeah. that to me is. So uh, is, is that okay if I get the bells? Give them back to the kids. We'll pursue. Sure, come on down. Yeah. I'll, I'll pursue I'll it with them. the grammar school. I'd like their contribution in some format or other. And The uh, only thing I'm going to say right now, I do want my grandsons, and it's going to go in the time capsule. Well, okay, okay. Well, get him, get him to write why to, it's going you, in the case. You have to do the bells they yourself. Are. He's I'm not doing that for you. I'll Give cut you slack, I'm... Stan, on that one. The only thing <laughs> I'm thinking is Catherine may have put them up by by class. So she, if she has a string and says, oh, this is the fifth grade, yep. she may have an easier chance. But... Oh, I'll let Kyle Karish know that it's, it, that his papa has it, and it's going to go in the, yeah, in the time well. capsule. So, Okay, so well, the I, other will, thing, yeah, I will get in touch with you, Stan, yeah. and uh, I will. Uh, I want my my granddaughters in the time capsule too. Good. <laughs> Good. How's that? We're all making decisions for these poor kids. <laughs> yes. Wait, wait a minute, your the bells in the time capsule. You just say your granddaughters in the time capsule, and I'm there like. No, yeah, no, I want her that's bell. Not, that's not happening. happening. Anyways, the bell is a really not, cute bell. Those bells were adorable. I have to admit, those oh, I was I, I, so happy the way DES uh, went into this full tilt. You know, the band, yeah. the whole thing. I just did. It, it was so it was sweet. sweet. Yeah, yeah, if you really look at those bells, those bells were pretty amazing. So yeah. anyway, I'm put them in the town report the there. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping to put them all in the time capsule. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, yeah, I got pictures. We can take pictures. Put the pictures in the report that goes in the capsule. Yeah, you know? there are pictures uh, in pictures. the report of the of the bells. Yeah. Well, I I sent you all. Did you all get it? I sent you a draft copy of the of the the report. Yes. Right. The, the report was done so nicely, Peter. I I'm so impressed with the magnitude of what is in there. And there's so many nice touches from the the bells and Diane, what you did on Founders Day weekend yeah. and the postage um, postmarks. Um, I, just there's so many good things. I'm really pleased. It it shows that we did a lot, lot more happens. Yeah, we did a lot of stuff over the years. You know, I mean, it was a really busy year, actually. And so, Peter, Peter knows that I'm literally, it's open on my computer on another screenshot. I'm just adding a few things that you wanted me to add to it from the Friends of Deerfield standpoint. And when so, will I get it, that, Chris? Uh, by tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's relaxing. I'm there, I'm like, I'm totally distracted by certain things going on. But I told Peter that I was delayed today. <laughs> well, and I cracked the whip, Chris. He's and got a few more hours. Over. It's still light <laughs> where he is. <laughs> Two things I forgot already. So Yeah, I can work all night long. Don't worry about that. <laughs> so just... we've got some pictures to put in, additional pictures to put in there, Pat, and some to swap out. But Holly, do you have any of the parade that you um, think are really warranted above what's in there i i believe kelly gave a whole bunch to pat so i thought pat was inserting the pictures and then i, I gave... was too but he did such a fine job with this 24 page report that i took out all the pictures that i had already inserted because i wanted like i gave you the uh parade work group and I I know Kelly gave you a whole bunch. Um, let me look back through it to see if there's a few token ones we want to make sure we include. I I really this is just my preference, but you know at the at the tail end of the parade, Larry. Larry, Rizzo, yeah. yeah, that would it just absolutely be, has to be. Absolutely, that, that would be lovely. Well, that's I in believe there. it was. I think I saw. That's in there. Yeah. It's it's in there. When when I did the report that I gave Peter, um, it closes with um, Larry being such an integral part of the parade, and we're so happy he participated. Yeah. 
that's what yeah. I was trying to do is yeah. kind of coordinate some of those pictures with your text. Yeah. That was the only one because, you know. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it, it was there. I read what she wrote. Okay, perfect. It was. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that I was wondering about is it, it where it doesn't matter a great deal, whether it's with a particular text. I mean, each one of the events got some pictures. So. They sort of belong there, but if you're really concerned about uh, cost, we could have pages of text with combined sets of pictures for different events. We only have one 350 as Peter. <laughs> okay. Thank so you. What is, what is, what is, I don't, don't, don't want to change it. What is your strategy? Is your, is your strategy to put it all in the town report or to have... A, a separate, I think they did this for the 300, to have a separate little booklet. Both, but, but part of the 350th, we we already, we budgeted extra money so that it could be, we would yeah, have it. Report. Yeah, and we have plenty of pictures and we had- How many copies are you expecting that we're gonna make up this year of the report? I don't know, Pat. Because we have gone over the years, we went from 500 to 400 to 300 to 250 we made last year. We still have the extra reports. But I would I would say, well, let's just get the cost estimate. We this because it's the 350th, I would think we'd want to do extra this year. I you know, I know we have from normal town reports, we have extra left over, but um, this is not, this is a 350. If people will want this as a collector item, a certain number of people will. So let's, let's see what we can get, Pat, and we'll make that decision. Okay. And start so selling, start selling them. Well, well there's, another, there's another way to do it too. And donation to the I town. Give you if you a, come you know, to the town meeting, you can pick version. one up for free. <laughs> Get <laughs> Peter to sign them outside of town meeting. Yeah. Well, well, we can have it as a digital document standalone. Yes. And just well, post it will it up be on the available on the website. And people can download the copy of the, of the report. Yeah, yeah, for $5. Oh, Let's get money into the town. No, we can't it's do that. retirement fund. <laughs> so, listen, we can't do so it. much trouble already. It's, it's a breach of ethics. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't say that. We're being recorded. Yikes. No, I didn't hear that. <laughs> we'll figure, we'll figure you, you heard it from me. You heard it from me. Nothing is free. Nothing yeah, but is Pat, free. Pat works it out pretty good. So we'll, okay. we'll see what Pat can come up with. Thank All you. Right. Well, I can I continue to work with Pat. And if, but if any of you have photographs that you particularly want to identify, we may. Re I mean, I I don't. All and, of and the pictures that are in there right now, I took. Yeah, and I Peter, I, I have I have a past few. pool or anything else. So uh I don't mind replacing pictures that I took. I just was trying to find, you know, for the parade, I was sitting here on the street and the floats went by and the different people went by and I took a picture and I wasn't very far away and I thought they came out reasonably well. Okay. But I'm not I'll, dropping I'll just... out some of those pictures either. Yeah, I thought they were the ones from Kelly. So I'll just go back and look <laughs> over them with Kelly. To see if we want to do any trades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you have, but you, but but Holly, your video footage, and any of that video video footage can be turned into still photos, if you want to put it in. Yeah, no, we're we don't need to get that complicated. We've got plenty okay. of pictures. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Right. And Peter, I have a few, I like just a handful that came in from different sources, and I'm digesting all that overnight yeah well just just send it on when you get it done I, you know it's <laughs> but it's just a handful i just I'm have a glass of apple wanted... jack after this and after that i won't care i wanted to ask about the flag that i saw stanley holding do we have any pictures of the deerfield flag i have one picture of stanley holding it do we have any pictures without somebody holding it? Do you know what flag I'm talking about? That's the, the one, one, on, one on the flagpole in town. Has, the, the one's on the. Um, 
It has the town seal on it. Yeah, those are the flags we had friends around the comet. Made. I mean, all we have is the proof of it. We have the proof. Yeah. That oh, we don't proof. have a picture of the actual flag. Because I have one that's going in the time capsule. You should of take a picture. You do. Who's got it? I have it. Can you, you take send a picture me? of it? No. I don't know. No. I can't take a picture of it. I will. I'll come over tomorrow and take a picture of you. Come on over, take a picture. Remind me. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. I and, wrote it down. I got and, my list and, here. Take and, picture of And that. Pat has made it clear that she doesn't want Stan holding it. So you're just gonna have to tack it up on the walls. I just thought it would be better than I mean, I think you were stand I don't remember where you were standing, but the where whole picture, everything around you takes away from the actual flag. I think that was in the town hall. I think Alex took that picture. We can lay it on a table and crop it nicely. Well, yeah. it, it but Diane, that's your much. job. It's well. so, it's yeah, like it's right here. The flag is off kilter. Yeah, but just... part of it is you want people in there, and so, I you know having Stan in there is nice. I don't want to be a party pooper, but I'm fading. So, are we done with business? Well, <laughs> okay. That's why we're getting silly. Um, I think my finance, you kept me long enough. I don't have to go back to finance. <laughs> so probably All right. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> so the added things were town report and disposition of the bills, and we've already covered that. So I will take a motion to adjourn if anybody's up for it. I'd like to motion us to adjourn. I will I second, second it. <laughs> Third. Okay, it is now 819. Good night, Again, all. We are I, make, I make a motion to adjourn the Friends of Deerfield board oh, meeting. Yeah, second. Good night, Good night everybody. Thank I'll you. We'll hear from you tomorrow, Chris.